um, that, yeah, it's definitely people that unfortunately do fit those descriptions. Um, and if, But I don't think that they understand, like, that they do or how they got there. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, I don't know, just, like, the commentary on it, you know what I mean, it, for you to talk about somebody that's in that situation um, from a degrading standpoint, like, even if they, like, if, if a girl has that kind of behavior and you can recognize it and they kind of comfortable being, you know, having sex with everybody or just comfortable being like just wild or whatever and some guy comments on it um i think that it's it's irresponsible on a guy's part because it's like you don't know how they got there and like like oh was saying like i feel sorry for girls in those situations like i feel sorry for girls in strip clubs and girls on porn and stuff i hope to god that if i do have a daughter that like chris rock said i keep her off the pole yo because it's like when whenever you see a girl in that situation like that's your sister you know what i mean that's your daughter that's like somebody's family and it's mad easy for us to look at it as a stranger and be like oh she's crazy that's how she is but if that was your sister you couldn't be in there looking at it if you would like it would be something really wrong with you, you know what i mean but regardless that's still a human being so it's like when you start to comment on it it's like you got to consider like this person got there somehow and they may just be malfunctioning at this point in their life but you know, I just, I still don't think it's cool. I think it's like a little reckless. Women, women look at music the same way men look at it. Like how they say, like how men want to be thuggish and stuff now. Like most, if you look at some of the women in the industry, like Nicki Minaj, Trina, you know, they label themselves as the baddest B, stuff like that. So I think it's more of like women look at music like how, how men look at it too. So of course they want to be that B because look at Trina, look at Nicki Minaj, all them, like all successful, most of the successful, well, people that look mm -hmm. successful. Right. That's what they label that self as, so I think that's that's more where that comes from. I still think like like they like he said in the video, we've been desensitized so much that it's not really a thing of right and wrong no more. It's a thing of what's going to work and what ain't going to work. Because I guarantee you, when when they come to the station, they totally different. Right. But when the lights come on, they rah 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 whatever they got to do to get that. Prime example, uh, we just had a show the other day with Rick Ross. If you was to meet the Rick Ross on stage, and, and he may be two different people, I don't know him like that. But to see the on camera and off camera is two different situations. But once again, it's about survival right now. We don't have a lot of options until those people in power that they see behind the scenes or to some of these gentlemen get there that may be able to get that power. When they get there and get that power to change the situation, it is what it is. Not standing it's right or wrong because I don't think there's a person in here that would agree. You call my my mother, sister, whoever that name, I'm gonna be happy with it. I don't care if she getting paid a hundred thousand. She might get a million dollars, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna punch him in his mouth when I cut him off. Uh -huh. But at the same time, it's okay, huh? We going all the way to the bank to cash that million dollar check. So, like I said, as bad as it may be, I think that's what it's come down to. Do you see themselves that way? And and on the flip side, even as men. You know, a lot of us uh, call ourselves niggas, and, and if you listen to my music, you're not going to hear me even use that term, even in, in public as well, because when I, when I, the people I surrounded myself with, that was unacceptable, you know, to use those terms and treat each other in that, in that way, so it's, that has a lot to do with it, too. You know how you how you grew up because I just started cussing honestly a few years ago. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know I cuss my music sometimes now, but it's it's all about you know either fighting the system, you know uplifting and education so, and having a good time, but a good time that I feel. It's more so about <laughs> when you're stripped from all of your identity and you come to a place and you have none of that. What makes you identify with whatever you do? Um, and gives you power. I think that's where the whole thing of how women classify themselves, like the sisters and B uh, segment of the video, like the guy was like, these are sisters and these are the, the hoes pretty much. I think it's, it's, it's all in, um, everyone, at least in this country, um, wants some kind of position of power. Everyone wants some kind of thing to identify with or identify as. I mean, when I went to Europe, we didn't, it wasn't a racial thing. It was just like, hey, where are you from? A country. Here is about what kind of race you are. Are you Latino? Are you black? Are you mixed? Are you white? Are you this? Are you that? And that's where the whole women thing comes in. Like, if you classify yourself as a hoe, you know you have power over men sexually. But if you classify yourself as a sister, you know you have power over yourself and over your industry, if you want to say so. 
Um, so it's all about how, you, and it's the same thing with, with um, some guys that classify themselves as brothers and some guys classify themselves as niggas. If you classify yourself as a nigga, you, you're kind of identifying with the hardcore, this is, you know, where I came from, this is what I was called when I was a slave kind of thing, and I grew out of that. And if you classify yourself as a brother, you're classifying yourself as a, a community person, a righteous kind of guy, and I think that's where the distinction comes from. Art doesn't really help with that because art is um, very interpretive. So it, it all depends on the individual who's interpreting it. But at the end of the day, someone wants to identify with something out of that art. I think, and I'm going to try to keep this short, because I think this question in particular can be a two-hour debate. Because everybody has an opinion about it. And if you talk talking about women and all that, then you got to talk about how men treat them, and then you talk like Michael Eric Dyson and misogynistic and blah, 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 and it's like, dang, this conversation will go for so long, even with niggas and brothers and whatever. Like, I don't, like, in that regard in particular, like, I grew up in Woodlawn, and I grew up in church, too. And I've been different places through a whole bunch, too. So what? I use the term nigga, and I can back it up. Why? But that has to do with an opinion. Now, to the question at hand. Uh, I'm sure I used to be word um, in some music in the past. Um, uh, could, um, in poor taste, you feel me? Um, there is a, definitely, uh, Jay-Z has a song called well, Business Assistance. And then like, uh, the, the lady came over, he was like, call him over here. The chick was like, we have some classy ladies. Hand down, and you just gotta do you. It's a, it's a market for everything, so see who you're marketing to. Like, but you can't market to a white flocks crowd for some, for some breakdancing on your back hip hop. Well, this, it's, I'm not asking about marketing or, or about completely forgetting about record sales. But the whole thing is that she's saying our people are struggling. There are issues. And, um, you know, artists such as Chuck D. And not say that that has to be your complete style. But, yeah, when do we, when do we use our music or when do we try to break out of that mold and and try to present something yeah, I, different. I, just, I think there is a template, and it's simply do it, you know? Um, and me coming into hip hop as an organizer, it was my job to get a, get hundreds of students out into the streets to talk about why our ceiling needed to be fixed that city or at Lake Cliff. So Chuck D noted that guys are trained to be aggressive, um, and they're divided among their peers, but that they don't challenge those in the higher power. Those folks who own everything around and who will come through and close your school or not fund your school or not bring new books or or um, you know completely take over your block and you can't live here anymore and they won't build it up to help you out but they'll move you out and rebuild it themselves. And these are the people that have the real college playing out in the industry and in our society at large. And again, I, I keep hearing everybody say, you know, it's not just hip hop. We can get past that. We know it's not just hip hop. Um, but we have control over this because we created it, even though other people are controlling it now, but it came from us, it came from our communities. So forget about what society is doing. We need to figure out what we're going to do and take charge. So do you see these tactics playing out, um, Willie Lynch's tactics playing out in our industry today? And do you feel that artists who are selling out concerts and making platinum records are men who have made Every it part of life, so that would include hip hop. So I agree with that. As far as them being rich slaves, um, at the end of the day, certain people who don't rap about negativity, they, you might not hear them on the radio, you might not see their video, but they still make a good living and take care of their family. Um, so even the people who are more mainstream that might make more money, um, at the end of the day, they are providing uh, they're providing for their family, they're providing for their loved ones, and a lot of times we're, they're taking that money to, to invest into other other uh, businesses, a lot of charity work, and things of that nature. So to compare them to slaves, I understand why we how we could, but if we were to compare them to slaves, I guess we would be admitting that slavery isn't really over anyway. So if we go with that mind state, then I, I, I can support it. But other than that, like at the end of the day, if I go to a show, and I'm not the most popular mainstream artist ever, and they pay me to, 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 to rap, I feel like at the end of the day it's business and, and I'm providing for my family, can we leave it at that? But I do feel like there's a lot of stereotypes, there's a lot of division, um, as far as like even in the videos, most videos have light-skinned women and not uh, dark-skinned women. Most videos have women who have perms and not naturals. So it's definitely a divide for sure, visually. Um, yeah. Alex? Um, yeah, I think that 
all of that stuff from slavery probably still playing out in society because it's not, it wasn't that long ago. Like Ola was saying, like we only so many generations removed from it. Um, and uh, um, when Chuck D talks about like having anger towards the wrong people, like me and O met because I was in a battle um, up in Mount Dunn, and it was like a championship joint and. Like, that's how I kind of started rapping. Like, when she was saying that she used to see me rapping at lunch all the time, like, we used to cipher, but I was just ready to battle somebody. I had no idea why. But it was like, we were ciphering, just rapping freestyle, but I was just waiting for it to pop off. I would even instigate stuff for it to pop off. And, like, it was just my, like, that was my thing, like, just being a battle rapper. Just, man, angry for no reason. Just tearing everybody down. And then, not even being able to be friends with people. Like, um, at that same battle when I met, oh, actually, before that battle, um, I battled with Scar, and some of y'all might know him, but I battled with Scar, and I think, like, me and Scar had, like, bad blood off of, like, some rapping. I didn't even care, but it was like, that shouldn't even exist. Like, we just trying to be artists. Like, why is it bad blood? So when I seen him at the battle, when, when I saw, oh, it was like, like, it got a little testy and a little heated, and it's like, yo, are we really, like, getting ready to throw down over some rapping? Like, none of this is real. Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, none of this is real. We, like, getting ready to throw down over it, but it's just, like, we was just so, like, I don't know, just built up with all this anger against the wrong people. Um, but it's important, like, to see when Chuck D says that, like, that people can come shut your neighborhood down. Like, the people, you know what I mean, that's, like, running the world or whatever, and sh come shut your neighborhood down, and that there's an opportunity there for you to be kind of frustrated towards those things. Like, um, it's stuff going on. It's stuff going on in like Africa. It's stuff going on in Haiti. That's been going on for a minute in both cases. Um, stuff going on all over the world. Like it's riots in London. London, not like some little hobuck town out in the middle of nowhere. In London, that's like riots in New York, basically. And none of that stuff was on our radar. We all mad at what the next did, what the next dude said, or you know what I mean, what Joe said. Why are you looking at me that way? Why are you checking my girl out? Not realizing that the world going crazy all around you. Like, stock market go down like 5% in two days. That's ridiculous. That shouldn't happen. But we all out with attention is on all this dumb stuff. So I think that for me, and I hope that y'all can take away from that, um, is it's important to kind of like widen your gaze. And basically just to like not be so focused on this little bit of stuff that's in front of you, but just open your eyes up a little bit more. And that's why they call it conscious rap. Like, like Green, Green said, like, it's just because you're aware. But just be aware. Turn on CNN every now and then. Don't just watch WBA. Though. Turn on CNN. Turn on BBC or listen to NPR on the radio. To hear what they go on. So you so. Which in turn made my day. No, they ache. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, stony the road we drop, bit of the chest and rod that we are fitting. Man, this has gotta stop. I am so sick of me being on the block. I am so sick of me being in a box. I am so sick of me being on a rock. I'm wearing my soul out and bleeding in my sock. The evening I'll be misdemeanor fleeing from the cops And the day I'm like Bruce Wayne eating from the top But neither one is fly I would love to be driven Not by chauffeurs but by vision But my wisdom or lack of Had me trying to mack bras in the back of every whack club Don't teach me how to duggy, teach me how to love me Thought I was Chinese, people calling me ugly Was we made to live like moles In the dirt I'ma sell my soul Ayo I'm living and I'm really not though. 